Good day chaps. So today's video will follow on from the previous one we did on Excalibur which had been designed by the STT or School of Tank Technology in 1961 and was mirroring a real project also been undertaken at the time the GSOR 1006. The GSOR or General Staff Operational Requirement 1006 was a project initiated in early 1961 along with a sister specification, the GSOR 1010. The former, and subject of today's video, was the Air Portable Armoured Fighting and Reconnaissance Vehicle, or the AAFRV, a mobile lightweight fire support and reconnaissance system, consisting of wheeled and tracked vehicles with very heavy firepower to weight ratios. And the latter was the AVR, or Armoured Vehicle Reconnaissance, which is sometimes confused with the above due to some very erroneous information online. There was also a third project, the GSOR 1008, which was also drawn up for a heavily armoured vehicle with similar weapons layout, but we've covered that vehicle before. This GSOR 1006 project was initiated by the DRPC, or the Defence Research Policy Committee, in early 1961, and the overall aim of the project was to work on a long-term replacement for the FV-601 Saladin armoured car. On the 7th of December 1961, the drawings and plans were submitted for review, which can be broadly split into four categories, casemated, turreted, conversions, and wheeled vehicles. All these machines offered very long range firepower, while their sister project, the GSOR 1010 vehicles, although fairly heavily armed, focused more mobility and reconnaissance than the firepower aspects. Following this review, the Defence Committee noted that having two separate niche systems was going to be problematic, and so merged both projects under the GSOR 1010 programme, which then became known as the Revision 1, and was initiated by the Director of the Royal Armoured Corps in 1963. This GSOR 1010 would then evolve into the AVR GSOR 3301 in 1964 and then merge with other existing fringe projects such as the LHMTV and the GST31 programs and then later split again from AVR into CVR with combat vehicle reconnaissance with both a tracked and wheeled version forming the CVRT and CVRW. There is even more to this story to be honest and plenty of smaller general staff requirements but these tend to be minor items and modules, such as radios and weapons, which all merge into the melting pot. So let's take a look at our main vehicle today, the 1006 series, or those that at least survived. Some data was not present on the cards themselves. However, we do know that the projects as a whole had set guidelines. So for example, while armor is not individually listed, we do know that it had to resist small arms and splinters only. Secondly, None of them list the speed, yet we also know the initial requirement was listed for speed to be not less than the Saladin at 45 miles an hour for the tracked vehicles or Ferret at 58 miles an hour for the wheeled vehicles. And so from that we can base a broad speculation over the vehicles as a whole. So let's start at number one. This was a casemated vehicle with a 105mm high velocity gun with a limited but unlisted traverse. The gun has an elevation and depression of plus 15 and minus 10 degrees and comes with either HESH or APDS with 20 rounds of the former and 15 of the latter in what appears to be two-piece rounds. It also features eight swing fire missiles mounted in its back bins angled up at 45 degrees. Secondary protection is from 0.50 and 0.30 pintle mounted machine guns and a coaxial. The crew is three and both the driver and commander can also act as the gunner. The commander, with his cupola, will control the missile, while the driver will aim the main gun due to the casemated nature. The overall weight is listed at 33,000 pounds, or 14.9 tonnes, which will allow it to fit inside the Beverly aircraft. The armour isn't recorded, but appears to offer likely resistance to small arms and splinters at best. The power is provided by a 240 horsepower multi fuel diesel engine with an Allison gearbox and a differential steering system. Next we have Scheme 2, 
Like the previous vehicle, this is also a casemated design, and if I may say so, is quite ugly. Uh, sort of like a Ferdinand had a drunken fumble with an FV432, and nine months later this was left on the door of the MOD. The automotive and crew aspects remain the same, with a 240 horsepower engine, albeit mounted in the front left of the vehicle this time, and the weight remains at 33,000 pounds. The main difference is this one has more rounds, with 35 105mm APDS rounds and 24 Hesch rounds, and keeps the 8 Springfire missiles on the back in a similar arrangement. However, two point fifties are now provided, one coaxial and one pintle, with 1500 rounds each. The main gun has some odd traverse angles, due to the casemated shape and the engine placement, resulting in more gun traverse to one side than the other, being 15 degrees and 10 degrees, while the gun depression is lower at minus 8 and elevation at 15. The armour, like the rest, isn't listed, although it seems to have some, if still thin, around the gun mount. The next vehicle takes a bit of a different turn, GSOR 1006 Scheme 3. This was based heavily on FV430 parts, and although the same engine and transmission as previously mentioned in the front left of the vehicle, this machine has very much a range standoff design, having no guns other than the single .30 with 3,000 rounds for close defence. It did, however, pack 24 swingfire missiles, with 16 ready to fire and a further 8 in stowage for a quick reload. There are 12 missiles in the main hull centre, angled up to fire forwards, and a further 4 in two pairs facing left and right, which, given Swingfire's ability to turn 90 degrees within the first second of firing, gave this vehicle a huge offensive bubble around it. The crew consisted of two men in a stepped front and back configuration, a commander controller and a driver controller, and both were able to fire the missiles and pilot them at the same time, while nearby infantry detachments could also do the same via remote control, allowing the vehicle to have four missiles in the air targeting different vehicles at the same time while remaining behind cover. Again, no armour is listed, but it's doubtful it's anything more than the FV430 family of around 12mm of protection. However, she is marginally lighter at £29,000 or 13.1 tonnes. The fourth design was very similar except that the engine was centre left, which is a bit of an odd placement. The missiles have been reduced to 22 missiles, with 12 ready to fire via the two crew and any supporting infantry again, and a further 10 missiles are carried in reserve. The two side launchers have been removed, and the crew are now mounted side by side to the front, possibly for better vision arcs. And the most noticeable feature otherwise is the inclusion of a 20mm Bofors cannon with a thousand rounds for a bit more support. Other than this, it's very much a similar case in engine, hull type and transmission, and the weight remains the same. Moving on, this is where we see turreted vehicles appear, although they're by no means conventional turreted concepts. We'll begin with number 5, which is an odd one, as not only does it look a bit strange, but it appears there are at least two vehicles with the same number allocated. Quite why is not recorded, so let's take a look at each. The first is this one, with a layout that one could be forgiven for looking like a small SPG. This vehicle has a setback but not entirely rear-mounted turret, which also contains all three crew. The commander, who doubles up as a gunner and a missile controller in the turret, along with a driver and a loader come radio operator. There does not appear to be a counter-rotating compartment like the Excalibur, for example, which would make driving this vehicle particularly tricky. The main armament is a 105mm high-velocity gun with 35 rounds, a .30 coaxial and a .50 ranging machine gun, and then nine swingfire missiles sort of slapped onto the back of the turret. The weight is £30,000 standard, which is fair at this point, and the engine is the same, but front mounted along with fuel and gearbox, which is now recorded as an Allison XTG250 cross drive gearbox. The second vehicle, also called Scheme 5, is the more infamous of the two. As this one appeared on the website Think Defence some years ago, possibly clipped from a magazine or such. However, on that site it was named AVR, which to be fair, it's not. Those were the GSOR 1010s, as we covered. And so, the internet being what it is, just copied and pasted that page over and over until what appears to be an honest mistake became the truth. Either way, this is the AAFRV 
GSLR 1006, and like the Excalibur from STT, mounts the turret to the front in a low down hull position, while the rear of the body mounts 16 swing fire missiles, 8 either side in a sort of chubby squat shape. There are also two engines listed, the Rolls-Royce K60 multi-fuel engine, as found in things like the FV432, of which the main body is a heavily modified form, with an Allison gearbox, and this one is referred to as a short-term vehicle. The other is dubbed the long-term, with a K50 200 horsepower engine and new light tracks and suspension, for saving around 1,500 pounds of weight. The main gun is 105 mm, but also recorded as a medium velocity gun with Hesch only and minus 10 degrees of gun depression and 20 elevation with 45 degrees of side of traverse. The crew was three again, the commander, gunner and driver, and this is also the only vehicle drawn up with a duplex drive and amphibious layout with raisable fabric skins and covers for its missile bins, as well as also the only vehicle I've seen with smoke pots added to it. There was a smaller little 1006 drawn up which appears to be very similar to the previous vehicle, being the smallest of the tracked batch. And this has the same multiple engine choices, the K60 or 50, and a lower weight of just 11.7 tonnes. However, this Whittle Doom box has a rapid firing 76mm gun with 35 rounds and 45 degrees to traverse either side with minus 10 gun depression and 20 elevation but this smaller gun is there to account for its massive missile payload of 20 ready-to-fire missiles with eight in either cheek and a four further missiles in raisable boxes which slide up from the rear and all three crew can fire the missiles independently. Anybody that survives the barrage of 76mm and 20 missiles in the face can be expected to be peppered by its .30 machine guns for good measure. One of the last track vehicles that we know of in this family is the sixth scheme. This is the heaviest of them, although not by much, it's still at 14.3 tonnes. The vehicle has the same engine and transmission that we're used to, with both mounted in the back. The main weapon is the larger 105mm gun, with 11 APDS and 24 Hesch rounds, and 11 swing fire missiles in a rear bin style setup. The main gun is still front and centre in style, but now has 90 degrees of traverse over either side, and a gun depression of minus 10 and an elevation of plus 17 and a point fifty and thirty are provided for close protection. The crew is still three, all located inside the turret itself, with the commander to the right facing the tank and the driver and loader to the left. The final two vehicles that we know of are both wheeled machines. The first is somewhat sensible, in as much as any of these machines are. The first vehicle is recorded as Scheme 1 and comes with a 105mm medium velocity gun with 35 rounds of hash and six swing fire missiles in a butterfly configuration and a further six in reserve. Due to the missiles taking up space on the back decks, the turret traverse is limited to 125 degrees either side with minus 10 degrees of gun depression and plus 20 in elevation. It would appear from the drawing that this gun depression will be limited to the front over the driver's cabin. The vehicle is a six by six configuration with either a Rolls-Royce B81 185 horsepower engine or the conventional 240 horsepower type as covered before and both engines are rear mounted. Whether the vehicle was to use skid steering or not is not recorded but it is possible as this was being studied at the time. Crew wise it was variable with either four commander, gunner, driver and loader in a sensible three in the turret one in the hull layout or just three crew but with reduced abilities. And then we move on to the second vehicle this one is recorded as GSOR 1006 Scheme 7, which means there could be five more missing vehicles. Or not, we may never know. However, this vehicle is packing about as much firepower as one can strap onto a set of wheels. The main gun is still 105mm with 35 rounds of hash and a coaxial .30. But to support them, it has 12 ready-to-fire missiles strapped to the back, and all of the crew, bar the driver, can fire them even on the move, although quite how is not recorded. The vehicle itself seems to have taken some inspiration from the French Panhard models, particularly around the well-angled face. Well guys, that's it for these vehicles. They were an interesting set of ideas, although perhaps not the wisest ideas, they show what was being considered at this time, and one can also see why they were dropped or merged with the more sensible 1010 concepts, which carried over the smaller 76mm guns 
and a more sensible number of swing fire missiles. As this project evolved into the CVRT, the missiles came back now and then and ended up as the striker in the long run. If in future I discover more information on this, documents lost or misfiled at the archives and so on, I'll keep you posted. But until then, if you like this, give it a like or share it about in places. I think many of these vehicles could be viable in games like World of Tanks, although maybe without the missile bits. Let me know where you think they might fit in. And until next time, toodle pip.